Functions are one type of sub-program that we can use in VHDL. Functions in VHDL function in the same way as they do in programming languages, but because we are dealing with hardware description, we have to think about how they synthesize. So there's a bunch of properties of functions in, uh, in VHDL. Uh, first of all, they are declared uh, in the architecture declaration body of the design where they are going to be used. If a function is to be used multiple times, and most uh, good functions are, then it has to be declared in a package. And we will discuss packages in a later video. So the second thing is that functions in VHDL can only use variable assignment. So you cannot use signals within functions. The third thing is that a function can accept any number of arguments, but all these arguments have to be input. They have to have a direction of in. You can state explicitly that they are inputs, but you don't need to because by definition, a function can only accept input arguments. And a function can only have one return value, which is returned using an explicit use of the return statement. Functions can be used anywhere in the uh, architecture. They can be used concurrently, called within concurrent statements, or called within uh, processes as a sequential statement. A function, the body of the function, has to be uh, written using, uh, can be written using any statement that can be used within a process statement. And execution of statements within a function happen sequentially. So let's take a look at an example of a function. Here we have a function called quad calc. It has four input arguments. We do not state that these uh, input arguments are inputs. You can actually use the uh, keyword in uh, after the names of the arguments, but this is superfluous because uh, we know for a fact that any argument of a function is input. Now, each function has to have a return value and in the function description, we have to state the type of return value. So this is uh, a function that returns a bus of standard logic, which is 17 bits wide. Now, after the function keyword, or after the return keyword actually, and before the begin keyword, we have the declarations section of the function. And in the declarations section, you can declare any number of variables you want to use, as well as any number of constants you want to use. Uh, you cannot declare signals because they cannot use signals within a process, but you can declare any variables or constants you need. The values of variables and constants will exist only within the function call and will reset between different function calls. So in this case, we have uh, four local variables that are uh, declared for use within this uh, function. So uh, after the begin keyword, we have uh, the body of the uh, function, which ends by the end keyword. And we can use any statements within the body of the function that we can use in a process. So you can use any sequential statements that you can use within a process. There is one exception to this. You cannot use wait statements in functions. So you can do whatever calculation you want to do, but at the end, of the function, you have to use a return statement. And this return statement basically indicates what value we will be returning. The value we will be returning has to agree with the data type that you declared for the return type uh, in the uh, function declaration. So this is the function declaration section, and this is the body of the function, including the uh, declaration of local variables. So this, whatever value this is, has to agree with this data type. And so we calculate a value called return value, which is a local variable. And this consists of a uh, calculation using uh, uh, some of the input arguments and some of the local variables. Uh, this is basically just calculating a, uh, a, a polynomial uh, of, um, of the inputs that we uh, provide to the uh, to the function. So it's just calculating a polynomial value of x using a, b, and c as coefficients and using powers that are declared locally within the function. Uh, 
Now, everything here is an integer. So uh, everything that we have given the function as input is integer. All the uh, local variables are integers, but the return type is a 17-bit uh, standard logic vector. And so we have to convert this variable, return value, uh, into a standard logic vector of 17 bits long. We use this predefined function called convert standard logic vector uh, to convert the uh, integer value into a 17 bit uh, bus. So um, functions are defined as pure and impure. The majority of functions you will write and you will use are pure functions. Some functions are impure functions. What is the distinction? A pure function is a function whose return value is defined exclusively through and only through its input arguments and whose impact on the rest of the world happens only through its return value. So if you look at this function, this is a pure function and functions are by default pure. So you don't actually need to state that it is pure. Why? Because this function only takes inputs uh, through the input arguments and its return value can be fully determined if you know its input arguments. Also, it has no impact on any statement in VHDL unless you use its return value. So, I mean, that makes sense and it's the default case. So we have to provide uh, contrary cases to understand how uh, we could have an impure function. So consider this function, for example, where we um, pass a single argument as an input to the function, and it's a constant uh, named x. And then we return a value, which is x to the power of global power. Here, global power is actually a shared variable that is declared uh, at the uh, architecture declaration level of the design that calls this function. And therefore, the value, the return value of the function is not only dependent on the input arguments, it is also dependent on something else, which is the shared variable. And so you have to declare this function as an impure function. If you want to see another example of an impure function, uh, then uh, check out the load memory function. It's a function called load underscore memory. And we discussed it in the file IO uh, video. So that function was used to load the contents of a ROM or a RAM at the beginning of operation. And that function had only a single argument, and that argument was a file name. So it was a string or a file name, um, you know, a file name expressed as a string, and it returned the contents of the memory. This has to be declared as an impure function, because when we pass the name of the file, to the calling function, we do not actually define if this file is going to be a read, a read file or a write file. And so at the level of defining the function, at the level of function definition, we could actually be defining a file for writing. Because we could be defining this file as a write file, we have a way of affecting the outside world other than the return value that we return with the function which is we could write to this file. And therefore the function has to be written as an impure function, otherwise it returns a, an error. So the only question about, um, about functions that we really have to ask is whether functions are synthesizable or not. And functions in general are synthesizable. They, they don't actually cause a lot of synthesis error. They are pretty much like loops in that they can't pass through synthesis. Uh, basically, if you are using only synthesizable statements within functions, then you will have uh, synthesizable functions. But the only problem is what results from this synthesis, as always. I mean, this is a re repeated problem that we have to deal with constantly. Something passes through synthesis, but the results of synthesis are unpredictable. And this is particularly um, dangerous and common with functions because functions like processes can use very, uh, very uh, flexible syntax. But more so functions tend to use a lot of arithmetic. Uh, for example, consider this function, which uses, um, uh, you know, the power, the exponentiation for, uh, uh, operator, which is something you would generally want to avoid. So again, what's, what kind of intuition uh, should we use when we 
uh, discuss a function. Uh, in general, if you use a function whose value, whose return value, will reduce to a number at synthesis time, then feel free to use any statements within it, and the function is safe to use with synthesis. What do I mean by this? Consider, for example, the call to this predefined function, conf standard logic vector. This is actually a rather complicated function from within, but its cost is nothing. So in terms of synthesis or hardware cost, it costs nothing. Why? Because it, it's only used to make the code readable. It's only used to make the code easier. It's only used to convert a, an integer value into a standard logic type value. And that is something that will be determined at, um, at uh, synthesis time and will, be, um, will not cost hardware. Let me use another uh, clearer example. Let's just assume that you write a function, which is really complicated. It calculates the sine of the log of the cosine of x. For some reason, you just want to create this function. There are two ways in which you can use this function. Let's call it sine log cosine. There are two ways in which you can use this function. You can either use this function to create uh, a circuit that does this. So for example, y would be equal to the uh, value of sine log cosine, the sum input signal or sum input um, variable x. Now that, is dangerous. That is something you should avoid because you don't know what hardware will result from this if, if this even passes through synthesis. But the other way to use this is perhaps um, to, for example, use it to determine the bus width of something. Like, for example, we could say that y is x from sine log cosine some number 9 down to zero. That's perfectly safe to use and it has no impact whatsoever on synthesis because this will reduce to a number at synthesis time. And so this is the rule of thumb that I like to use. If the function, you can predict that the function is going to reduce to a number at synthesis time, then it's perfectly safe to use it. And most function calls actually do that. So remember that sometimes what you have within the argument may not be an explicit number, but if it is a generic or a constant, it has the same effect and the function is perfectly safe to use.